So in this video, we're going to look at this question, which is based on the idea that you've taken $100 and you invested it in 1863. We want to know what would it be worth today? So to figure this out, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our drive account. We're going to click new folder. I would call this a spreadsheet folder. I'll, I'll call it Google spread sheets. And the idea is all of the spreadsheets you make can go in this folder. It's very convenient, especially for this personal finance course. I would then click this get link up here. What we'll do now is we'll change it so that anyone with the link has access to anything we create in this folder. This folder is now shared and so are all the contents inside by default. So pause the video, take a moment and create that folder. Okay, now you've got your folder. Open it up. Inside, click New, Google Sheets, and we're creating a shared sheet inside that folder. And I'm going to call this uh, spreadsheet. I'm going to change the title. If you're in my class, you should put your name here and the following, something like this. $100 in 1863, and then your name by Sean, and you would include your first and last name. All right, now, we're trying to track what's happening with money over time. So I'm gonna name, these are, these are different cells in our spreadsheet, these individual spots are called cells. And we call these the columns in the spreadsheet. So we have column A, column B, column C, column D, and so on and so forth. And these are the rows, one, two, three, four, and so forth. So we have columns, we have rows, and they meet at these locations that are called cells. This cell, we always say the column first, is at A, and column A, row one. So this is cell A1. I said all that so that you understand what I'm about to say, which is in cell A1, type time, something like that, or year. Maybe year is even better, so that years or year. Year is good. Then we're looking at money, so let's look at the amount of money we have. And then we can look at the amount added. Now we want to clean this up a little bit, so I'm going to click my first column, hold shift, click the second Click the third while I'm holding shift. Just a little bit of formatting here. Um, here we have different alignments and things we can do. I'm going to put the text in the middle. That's how I like to put my text. I want to also make sure that they're centered in the middle here. So that's a vertical alignment. Now we're starting in the year 1863. Type that in. Now for this column, this is a column dealing with not just numbers, but, but money. So I'm going to go to Format. So click Format then go to number, and out of all the choices, I'm going to pick currency, and I'll do rounded. We don't need pennies here, we're just estimating. So I'm gonna click that, and now any number I type in, I'm gonna type in 100, hit enter, you can see the dollar sign appear. Now the amount added is the amount that's growing each year, because we're investing this money, that means we're putting it out there and getting a return on it, getting some money back. But there's nothing added yet. So I'm just going to put zero. But before I put that, same thing, I'm going to click the column, go to format, and number, and then currency rounded. I want to deal with dollars here. So then I'm going to type zero. So pause the video. Make sure you have this part set up. Once you have this set up, you're ready to analyze the problem. Every time we go down a row, we want to add one year. So it should go 1864, 65, 66. So a nice way to do this, I think, is to enter a formula. We want to get familiar with formulas in spreadsheets. To start a formula, press equals. You always start a formula by pressing the equals sign. Now what we want to do is take the previous cell, the previous year, which is right here. I just, I pointed up one, X that out. So A2 is the previous year. We want to take that number and add one to it. So this is saying equals A2 plus one. It's saying take the number in A2 and add one to it. So take 1863, add one, and enter the value here. So I'm gonna hit enter, and you can see it enters 1864. 
Now, you notice this little blue square in the corner right here. I'm going to scroll over to it until you see not a cursor that's pointing, but a cross like that, that crosshair. Click and then pull it down and keep going. We're trying to get all the way to the current year. So dragging way down. So we're in 2020, so I went too far, so I'm going to hit shift, up, 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 and delete to clear that off. I had to go down 159 rows from the very top here to finish the year calculations. So now our years are entered. Now, in the video that we just watched, we're assuming 7% interest. And think about what that means. That means that every year we have 7% more than we had the year before. So instead of having $100, we'd have 107. But we don't want to type in all the numbers. We want to think about the calculations here. So to get 107, what do we have to do? Let's use a formula. Equals the previous number that we had, the $100, times with percents. If you want to add 7%, think about what you have to multiply by. I think, okay, well, if I want to double my money, doubling would be times two. That would be 200%, but we don't want to do that. If I want to increase my money by one and a half times, so 50%, if I want to increase it by 50%, I would multiply by 1.5. So 100, the starting amount, plus 50.5. If I want to add 7%, I just type in 1.07. In other words, I multiply by 1 and 7%. So multiplying by 1.07 will add 7% to $100. Boom. And I also want to keep track of the amount of money I'm adding each time. Equals, well, how much was added? I'm going to scroll over, left, up, to B2, and then subtract, nope, let's scroll over to B3, and subtract B2 from it. In other words, how much did the money change from B3, this location, to this location here, B2? And you can see it's $7, so let's hit enter and see if we get 7 It went up $7. It did. So now we can drag both of these formulas down and it will repeat the calculation. Because the next year, we're going to have 7% not on the 100. That's not what compound interest does. We're not going to have 7% on the 100. We're going to have 7% on the 107. Isn't that cool? Instead of 7% going always back to the original and getting, let's say, $114, it would always be another $7 for our total amount in the bank or wherever we have this money. We're adding 7% to the new amount. So I'm going to select both of these. All I did was I clicked this. I held Shift, and then I clicked this. If that's too difficult, you can hit uh, this cell, type, press Shift, and then press Right. Then scroll over until you see this cross and drag it down. So here you can see, oh, well, wait, Sean, it added $7. Is this formula broken? Let's see. We'll drag it again. And something happened there. We didn't add 7. We added 8. And that shows you that something's beginning. The rate at which the money is growing is increasing, right? So let me say that better, in a better way, excuse me. The amount of money that the money increased by is going up. So instead of adding seven, we now added eight, right? We're adding more already. Why is that? Because 7% on $114 is about $8. 7% on 100 or 107 is closer to seven. So we're adding more money. And as we drag it down, right, you'll see that the money is going up but not only is the money go up, the amounts that we're adding are going up. 9, 10, 11, 12. And you want to go into the current year. So if I drag it even down, just down, say, 1900. So over 120 years ago, look what's happening. That money, that $100, is already at $1,222. And it's got up by $80 from the year before. So you want to select these two and drag it down all the way until you reach our current date, to see how much money you would have. So type that value in so we can see it.